This week on Maker Update, NFTs from Randy Robots, folding your way forward, harvesting bear brains, and audio options for your next project. Hey everyone, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update, the show where we update you on cool projects makers are making. I hope you're doing well, and maybe even thinking about your Halloween projects. I've got a fun show for you. Let's get started with the project of the week. Check out Kazkuchi. This is a robotics installation by Sokano, Akihiro Kato, and Takemi Watanuki. You can sort of think of it like a cross between a Tamagotchi and a hex bug. Each robot has its own unique identity registered as an NFT and programmed into an RFID on its side. As other robots approach, they can read each other's tags. Mostly they just avoid each other, but if it's breeding season, break out the Wawa pedal, two Kazkuchis can mate, resulting in a fertilized egg appearing on their screen. This egg not only represents a new NFT identity ready to be dropped into a new robot, but it also catalogs a branch in the family tree. And that ultimately is what this project seems to be about. It's an exploration of lineage, which is detailed for each robot on the interactive website. Within that, it's an exploration of how to define a robot's lifetime. Because just like your Tamagotchi, these critters are born to die. Through mating though, they pass on the name and symbols of their family line and leave behind a link on the blockchain. So that's the software and storytelling aspect of this project, though there's even more to it that's worth exploring if you're curious. From the hardware end of things, you can kind of piece together what's going on. The big M5 embossed on the enclosure is a giveaway that they're using a stock M5 stack product called the M5 Stick, available through Digi. This developer board uses an ESP32 microcontroller with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. There's an accelerometer, IR transmitter, microphone, real-time clock, a built-in screen, and a built-in rechargeable battery. There's also an I2C Grove port for easy expansion. In this case, some of the I.O. seems to be connected to the card reader on the side. Some seems to be connected to the motor driver board directing the geared motors and tiny steering drone motors underneath it. And then there's what appears to be a lightweight inductive charging pad sticking out from the top. This seems to be wired directly to the board's USB-C port. When the Kazkuchis are in the wild, a recharging tree is placed nearby where the robots can top off their battery. It's all kind of cute and artsy, but there's some real interesting consumer robotics ideas being explored here. Like, imagine how different your relationship would be with your Roomba if you knew it had a sense of itself and where it came from, or had an impulse to have children of its own and have playdates with other Roombas. Maybe it would cheer you up. Maybe it would make you fiercely loyal to a certain brand or buy more products to keep your vacuum from getting lonely. It sounds a little crazy, but I think this is kind of where we're heading. Now for some news. You can probably tell I was on a cute robot vibe this week. From the University of Pennsylvania's Sun Robotics Group in collaboration with the University of Illinois, there's a new prototype and research paper on origami robotics. This particular design is called the Curve Quad Origami Quadruped. It uses a single servo and a sandwich of flat materials, including a flexible printed circuit board, a flexible laser cut piece of what looks like an opaque plastic sheet, and some flat pieces that connect the sheet to the servo horn. I love the funny little way it walks, and what's amazing is that by adjusting the amount of rotation and the range of rotation, you can steer this thing around with just one servo. Really cool idea. More projects on Adafruit, Aaron St. Blaine has a fantastic guide on how to hack the modern remake of the classic 80s Teddy Ruxpin animatronic toy. Unbeknownst to me, this talking toy bear got a relaunch in 2017. The telltale difference is the LCD eyes. But the best feature of this new model is that they can be had for around $20 on eBay if you're okay with the used one. Using Aaron's guide, you can reprogram the electronics with your own sounds, voices, and stories. You can retime the mouth movements to match up, although that's a little painstaking to get right. And if talking bears aren't your thing, 
Aaron has tips on how to excavate the Ruxpin guts and transplant them into a new plush creature. Now for some tips and tools. On the Playful Technologies channel, Alistair has a super useful guide on how to choose and use many of the popular formats of audio modules. Adding audio playback to an electronics project is easier than ever, but it still requires a lot of considerations. Will sounds be triggered directly by buttons or indirectly through a microcontroller? Are the sound files short or long? Should sounds play all the way through or stop when the button is released? How important is sound quality? How loud does it need to be? There's a lot to think about and Alistair clearly has a lot of experience and tips to offer. If you want to add sound to your project, maybe an upcoming Halloween project, this video is worth a watch and a bookmark. I also wanted to share this skateboard rack by Beat Carer. The minimalist design is made from what appears to be a brake bent sheet of stainless steel with cutouts for the trucks. An additional cutout beneath the trucks makes it possible to lock up your board. The same is true for the space below the skateboards, which is made for scooters to be parked and locked. I think it's a great design for public spaces, providing a bike rack style option for locking up scooters and skateboards, but I also think you could adapt some bite-sized elements of this design for storing a board or a scooter in your house or garage. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their new series, The Bite-Sized Engineer. In this first episode, Zach offers some useful tips on picking a power supply for your project. From common batteries to larger hobby grade rechargeable options, DC adapters, bench top power supplies, and even how to dial in your power needs using linear regulators and buck boost converters. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, Big thanks as always to DigiKey for making this show possible and thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.